Hello and welcome to the show. This is Webmaster Paul for Freshwater Diver 1. Okay guys, so we're on Crummick Water today and down there is the beach if you want to do a short entry. Now the car park we pulled up into is great if you're going to go down to the beach. That's the perfect place. Horse Point, which is slightly further away, you can actually park up on top of Horse Point, as you'll see in a moment. Right now we're just going to walk along, show you the distance to be covered here. It's not that great. And here we are just heading down to the beach. Your boating and fishing permits. I'll put a blown up picture of this at the end of the film for anyone into boating and fishing. Even when it's wet, these are not that slippy walking down here. To the right of that fence you've got a tree, underwater tree, uh, which is where the perch hang out during the breeding season. There's the beach. And back up the stairs, or steps. And here's a group of wild swimmers going in. When there's a motorbiker going by and he's pulling up at Hawes Point and that's actually where he's parked. If you're going to dive Hawes Point, that's where you want to be for the cars and uh, offload your gear there. It's not double yellow lines up there either, so you're okay to park. Assuming no one else has got in there before you. We'll have a chat to that motorbike shortly. Sounds like they've got a new wild swimmer there, feeling the, 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 the pinch a little bit with the cold. Yeah, it's pretty cold in here. Okay guys, so we're on Crummick Water today and down there is the beach if you want to do a short entry. But I'm going to show you where to go for a jump entry. Carefully make your way down there. I'll just show you that. I'm just going to show you this. So it can get slippy on here, so watch out for the soil. Got the little bluebells there, guys. But down here we want to be. You can see how clear the water is in Crummock water. You've normally got about 25 meters. Unless it's raining. And if it rains, you're only dropping about five meters, losing five meters of visibility. Okay, so this is it, guys. Uh, I will have to be kind of careful. As you will have to be, but normally. And just 
try and work your way down here onto that ledge and do your jump now if you fin out in that direction you'll head out and come across the abyss as I call it and it's just a drop off on the underground underwater mountain edge so you've got the abyss out here and you just drop down what you can also do is just come down here But you can see here why you wouldn't do a jump entry because it's not deep enough guys okay well, what you could do this is the easier path well you could step on here and leap over or again if you can get down to there and out And this is what they call Horse Point. So then you can see over there in the background we've got the car park where we parked. You've got the steps coming down onto the shore. If you turn right when you've come in from the shore or from Horse Point here, turn right across this way. You'll actually come across her tree um, and the perch in springtime when it's breeding season a spawning season the perch congregate around that tree and uh, lay their eggs or the spawn so enjoy this one nice clear lake you can head up that way head out down the abyss or you can head off around this wall here and remember you've got the actual rock face which goes right down to 30 odd meters you've got the rock face out here which goes right along and beyond where we can see here as it rises up again and you can come back down around eight nine meters or whatever you want depth wise back to your entry point And just from this jump off point, once again, I'm just looking around the other side that we looked at before, uh, looking up the way. This kind of looks, it's just the camera trick here, guys. It looks very steep. It's not that bad. Uh, you can get down this reasonably easy. Okay, let's put it that way. But you'll get a better idea uh, when you take a look at this when you arrive. And there is actually just uh, three groups of people, I would say, would be in interested in doing this jump. And that's the divers for the training. You've got your wild swimmers who might want to jump off here uh, and head out. And you have the tombstoners who might do something quite a bit different to what we're talking about. Good luck, tombstoners. Okay, so I'm just going to take you on a little dive and we're just getting prepared half an hour to kit up roughly test everything get into the water here we're given the okay signal everything seems all right as we check our direct feeds etc in the water getting under and we're going to do an okay ch yeah okay signal again that everything's feeling right telling each other which direction we should go be going in Checking all the instruments. Oh, my compass was a bit off there, sorry. <laughs> but uh, heading off into the deep. Uh, we're getting down to the rock face here at Crummock Horse Point. And we're now looking for any signs of life, such as the fish, maybe trout, possibly perch, or any uh, rare water sponges, freshwater sponges. And uh, there's one small one. 
So that tells me we're at about 25 metres. We haven't got quite to the bottom yet. Because they get bigger and better as you go deeper down. I was just checking his computer there. Getting the read off the uh, screen. Which tells you depth, time, various times we have. We have duration and we have bottom time. The computers tell you what's in your blood, what's in your bones, uh, what's in your fat tissue. Uh, what I'm talking about there is nit nitrogen. How much nitrogen in the blood, how much nitrogen in the bone, etc. And it starts off nice and green and works into the red when you've got a little bit too much nitrogen in the system. We've got our torches on because past 12, 10, 12 meters in virtually all the lakes, it's pretty pitch black apart from your torch. So I've got our main beams on here. We also have backup torches and we've got strobes on us. And that looks like the bottom, so we're at 32, I believe. We actually use the torches to signal to each other. Got some nice, I think that was sponge that we were seeing there on the rock face. There's some more. Buddy is just getting a reading off his computer. We're actually coming up here, near in the top of the uh, abyss, as I call it. And the only thing that we can hear down here is actually our breathing, the air bubbles escaping. And as we take in air, we can hear that, the hissing from that, and also the hissing from our direct feeds as we put pressure into the dry suit and pressure into the stab jacket. He's got his straw on because we've been deep down. And I don't remember what I was saying to him here but um, it's probably something to do with deco. And are we okay to move forward? I'm saying, so I'm saying yes, let's go. I'm just trying to get a silhouette shot of him as he goes along. And here we are having a bit of a joke because my navigation is usually <laughs> outstanding. I always, within 20 or 30 feet, hit the target where, where we got in. Uh, that's where we get out. I'm extremely accurate. doesn't matter what the currents are doing. Uh, this time, <laughs> hey, yeah, 20 or 30 metres away at okay. least. So you found that quite amusing. I am human after all. There you go.
on it. He thinks they have to be keen. There's a lot of them doing it these days. Yeah. And, paddle, and then paddle boards. I think the fish will be a book. Mm. You know, but, um, I'm bothered this year with things, you know, seasons halfway through before it opened up. Yeah. Last year there was a group of like all the women down at the bottom end. Yeah, yeah. Have, having a good time, you know. Yeah. All the day, you know, to get out there looking great big. I'd imagine you'd just eat some big fish then when you were dead. Uh, not really. No. In here, masses of perch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. The Eden Valley divers um, filmed them uh, last month in the thousands. Uh, you actually see literally thousands of them. And then one show goes by, then another thousand yeah, goes right. by. Because fishing wise, I mean, I didn't really fish it for trout and. You know, trout perch will take the same birds and mm. with very, very few perch. Yeah. But, um, it can be more care for the trout. But, um, nice. You know, bass that that won't sort of like in there now, but that must be in our for the roads. There's only me there. Really this road, and I looked around these, the red arrows coming down the lake. And I stood out there in the water, and I heard a small trail when I went by, and they were fantastic. <laughs> so, Great, yeah. Yeah, oh, bass yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, because I mean they come off Windermere the and then they're across the across bass as well. Yeah. I've got a couple on uh, on YouTube with them flying by. Uh, the transport plane as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see yeah. them around occasionally. So, yeah. And quite often you see you know the jets about there. Never seen the red arrows this no. part. Uh, no, no, I've only ever seen the jets. Yeah. yeah. There was one there, down the bottom end. Whether it was a Spitfire, I don't know, but I could hear this plane coming. It passed me, the sound changed. I don't know the sound. I don't know what I'm saying. It's no jet. That's just right. But the change when it passed and you were behind it, it totally different and a fantastic sound. I'd like to sincerely thank the next person for sharing his adventure into wild swimming. The reason behind his taking up of wild swimming is a very sensitive and emotional story that happened at the start of the year and to which I know neither of us would feel comfortable sharing here. So I have delicately excluded those upsetting moments What I take away from this is Ian's positive attitude in moving forward with his plan to immerse himself into exploration and adventures. And to Ian, my sincere thanks for sharing your new adventure with us here at Freshwater Diver One. Thank you. Ian. Ian, right, aye. Well, how long have you been doing this then for? Just come and move once, twice a week. Right, right. You just started this year, or have you yeah, been? Yeah, I started this year. It's sort of New Year, New Year resolution, along with a bit of road running. Right. Uh, I decided to. Uh, it was just a a, a moment to uh, to reflect and move on. So yeah, yeah I always find something I wanted to be the uh, outlet to, uh, right. to uh, right. enjoy the. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, I went earlier this year to, to Malta. Uh, to do a bit of uh, I've done a few try dives in years going past. Right. Uh, but uh, I'd, uh, well, I went in January and I got my got my certification, Chikira Point, went out there, a few other points of uh, 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 some of the 
Well, I say race the more rocky uh, lapsy, car lapsy. Uh, so Where, where's that at? That whereabouts is that? Is that in this country? K Kira, do you say Kira Point? No, it's a Kira Point. Sh it's just, it's a, yeah, it's the top of Malta. Oh, top of Malta. Because uh, you, you go across the Gozo. Uh, yeah. It's just a wonderful little swim point. Uh, went for double dives there. It's just magical yeah. just to, to see uh, the highlight. Was, well, there's a few highlights, but one of them is to yeah. see a little octopus. All right. Uh, so <laughs> just, <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they've got caves in Gozo as well, you know. Yeah, and that's what I'm planning to go next uh, time round uh, Yeah. I'll have to wait and see, because normally I get two weeks off in January. Right, uh, Ian, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, if you go in the caves, oh. turn yourself upside down and look up, because that's where all the life is. <laughs> yes, it will be. I was missing it all, you know, and yeah. they, t they tell me, go like, you know, mm. so I turned upside down. I yeah. thought, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All the I mean, colour. Yeah, but... Uh, I mean, Malta's been uh, one of my favourite spots. For, uh, I've been about four times. That, that's what I've been to uh, <coughs> was uh, last year. I went to uh, uh, was Iceland uh, and I went to Sulfur uh, to snorkel and that. And that was just it was, like, you go in a dry suit, oh, but by God, you feel your little digits. <laughs> Mm. This is something I always wanted to do. Was like get in the Arctic Circle and do diving there. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's just the clearness. But, uh, of the, the clearness of the water is just it's immense. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, uh, you know. This is Webmaster Paul from Freshwater Diver One on YouTube. Thank you for your likes, subscribes, and shares. Those are very much appreciated. You're welcome to leave your comments below. We love reading them. Thank you. We'll be uploading videos every Friday. See you next Friday.